You know, every day I put on my gi, I'm learning. Every day I train, I feel like something I could do better. If I tap the guy out five times, I want to tap him out ten times. If I tap him out ten times, I want to tap him out five times with one hand. If I can do that, then I can do it with no hands. And if I can tap him out with no hands, I want to tap him out ten times with no hands. And then I put blindfold. So there's always a way you guys can get better. You can never be satisfied. You know, you can never say that's good enough. That's wrong. I got a question. Okay. Well, first, his question. Uh, what would you say is the difference between Grace Jiu Jitsu and Grace Jiu Jitsu? Well, Grace Jiu Jitsu is the only Jiu Jitsu there is because my grandfather, Andrew Grace, is the one who created this leverage that I've been talking about. He was 130 pounds and he had to develop a way to use his body weight because he couldn't fight straight with anybody. So he developed ways where the guy would get tired and he would stay comfortable and then he would take advantage of the situation after however long it may take. So Japanese Jiu Jitsu is you throw and then you hold the position. And then he couldn't do that. After he threw the guy, if the guy wanted to roll, he would roll. My grandfather didn't have the strength. so. He let the guy go and just kept going with the position and go to his back and then go to this and then do that. So the guard position, this position you saw me using mostly today, is what my grandfather created. There were, the guard didn't exist, you know. Nobody knew how to fight from the back and feel comfortable. So that's where he felt comfortable because anybody can lay on their back. And he learned the best ways to position his body to where the guys couldn't attack him. And then the guys would eventually get tired and then he would choke him. But an example, the Japanese choke was like this. You get 200, and the, he couldn't do that. So he would pull him in and use his body weight. So, of course he has to use a little bit of strength. But to show you the extreme, my grandfather could never do one pull-up. Ever. Every one of his fights, when he fought 220 pound guys, he never, his whole career, could do one pull-up. He would go, Whoa! his whole life. So his matches lasted a lot longer because he couldn't put the, the pace on it, but he wasn't never beaten. You know, his idea was he would, if he didn't lose, he won. So that's what my grandfather created. And then my dad, he put on all the connection, all the weight distribution that I was talking about today. That's what my dad invented, you know. So that's the next level. Everybody who learned from my grandfather learned the leverage. And then they put their strength in and that's what the jiu-jitsu you see today is. But every jiu-jitsu that you see today is somehow, somehow learned from my grandfather. Whether it's the purest form, I don't know. Whether it's learned by my dad, who is a completely different martial artist, I think is a completely different type of jiu-jitsu. All the connection, all the leverage, I mean not the leverage, all the weight distribution that I was talking about, that's all my dad. He's the one who took that to the next level. And you know, hopefully, if I'm good enough, I can maybe put some, add some stuff to it, you know? But that's, every Jiu-Jitsu is great Jiu-Jitsu. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is just what they call it here in America. Or in Canada. Uh, I've got the figure of shades over my back, actually, because uh, I'm using too much of my strength still. Mm -hmm. And it's normal. It, it, it's normal to want to win, <laughs> and it's normal to do everything you can to not lose when there's somebody trying to choke you. Yeah. You know? yeah. But the more and more you put your ego at the door and you are open to see what options you can have, because if you see, you get tired very quickly. And what happens when you're training on the street and something happens and you get tired? Then all the jiu-jitsu you learned here was thrown in the trash. So jiu-jitsu is not about time. It's about you know feeling comfortable all the time. And the more and more you try to understand the easiest ways, it's too hard to do this, I'm going to do this. The more and more you, because you're the only one that can get better, you put that effort in to figure out how you can make it easier, how you can use that strength, you know. Try training for one hour straight, I doubt it you can train at that pace, you know, but you probably train three minutes, four minutes, get tired, breathe a little bit, ah, I'm going to drink some water. Now I'm feeling good. Now I'm going to train again, you know, which doesn't make sense. You should be ready to train with one person for an hour. And then you see what really counts. Because it only counts when you're tired. When you're strength, that becomes ability. That becomes testosterone. That becomes strength. That becomes your quickness. All the 
personal abilities you may have last in the first five minutes. After that, it becomes technique. So, so when, do, when do you use those strengths? Well, I've definitely trained using my strength. I've definitely trained using technique. I've definitely made so many mistakes because I've, I've made all the mistakes you guys have ever made. I wasn't born a black belt, you know? But I always had my dad in my ear telling me the right path to go. And eventually, to get to the point where I've gotten today, I've won a lot of matches. I've lost a lot of matches. I've used a lot of strength. I've gotten tired. I've trained where I haven't gotten tired. So because I've gone through my whole life of training jiu-jitsu, I know now how I want to train and how I don't want to train. The tools I should use and the tools I shouldn't use. And then I just get better and better. But you know, how long have you been training for? One year. One year. So you just started. You know, you may think, oh, one year is a long time. But if you think about how much you don't know, you're just starting. I train with guys who train for 15 years. And then they feel like, I, don't, I feel like I'm a white belt with you. Because you were training 10 years, 15 years in the wrong direction. Going the wrong way. Going through the mountains with a bunch of booby traps and, and things in your way that you don't know. Instead of going on a clear path with a nice light at the end of the tunnel. You understand? So the closer you are to Shane and me and my dad and the purest jiu-jitsu, the more time you're going to save if you want. You know, if you don't, you can use your strength all day and I can't do anything about it. I can only show you the path. I can't make you do it, anything. But for you, an advice is train and don't think about getting tired. Train and when you get tired, try to keep training and see how much you can't do now because you're tired. And then you start to think, oh, well, I can't do this now because I'm tired. I'm going to do this. And then you start breaking it down into certain positions. Uh, any tips on just getting your breathing together? Is there any, any drill exercises, any, any special things you ever learned about just... Yeah, I've learned my whole life. And um, my dad always told me about breathing. And as a kid, I was like, oh, yeah, breathe. Okay. And I go home and skateboard and do whatever. And I never really clicked, even when I trained. But the older you get, the more pressure is on your back, the more tired you get, the more, the more um, desperate situations, then you have to use the breathing. And I, and I will say that the only way you will get to a certain level is by breathing right. If you ever see tennis players, <gasps> when a lion is running, <gasps> you know, every animal breathes. A human is the only animal that doesn't breathe. And uh, a tip, you have to breathe through your diaphragm which is here. If you see, the lungs are like bottles. They are at the top and they go to the bottom. If you breathe here, that's just my top of my lungs and that's where all the emotion, if you guys ever seen the Hulk, my dad is explaining everything I, I'm explaining now. Everything bad, all the emotion, every kind of fear you guys have comes here. Oh man, there's a tiger. But when you breathe through your stomach, you see how much more I'm breathing? <sighs> Rather than <sighs> for you guys back here. <sighs> That's a bad way. <sighs> so you want to always breathe out. <sighs> always through here. And if you feel after a while you're gonna get kind of lightheaded because it's so much oxygen going into your brain. And then once you get to a certain level, you can do, if you, everyone wants to go to this side here, I'll show you guys something. And that's just the highest point of being able to use your diaphragm. You know, you always want to breathe through here. But a training I, my dad does that I follow is, you know, when you get into freezing cold water. You guys probably know if there's freezing cold water nearby. So <laughs> um, the, the only way you can last, the, the, the cold and the burning is the worst thing that your brain can go through. It's the same nerve cells that contact your pain. So it's the worst. 
and you get in ice cold water, <gasps> you want to get out, no matter what. Your body is telling you to get out. And the only way you can control that is by breathing through your diaphragm. So, you know, and before training sometimes, if I can't get in cold water, I've done this before where I've, I, you can only get to this point after years of training, after years of training breathing, and after putting your mind through a lot of situations. And then a test you can do if you guys want to test yourself to see if you're ready. You get in ice cold water and you sit there and you get to a point where not where you can stay in. <laughs> okay, I did it for a second. No. But to get fully relaxed, get in ice cold water and you feel like you're in a jacuzzi. <sighs> At first you <laughs> And the water's up to you. <sighs> and then your body becomes numb and you're... And then you laugh, <laughs> and you're like, and you get out, and you feel like nothing you've ever felt before, because your mind just went through hell, and you told yourself, no, you can live through hell, right here. And the breathing is the only way you're going to be able to do that, you know. It will take you to the next level, and that, for me, but also when you're arguing with your girlfriend, when you're yelling, getting yelled at on the street, when something critical happens when you need to be in the moment, you become clear and you become present. And that is something that, you know, uh, just the breathing alone, I, I would recommend you guys breathe a lot, breathe with your emotions. Go. You just are every day learning and pushing yourself, and then you get to a point where it doesn't matter what happens, you're ready for it. You know, if you figure out you're gonna have to die tomorrow, you're gonna die tomorrow. You're gonna have to accept it. You know, so I think that's something that is extraordinary to your life. What goes on in your head right before you step on the mat? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. I just put, put everything in God's hands, and I see whoever is better. Well, definitely I've lost, and every time I lost, I was thinking I was going to beat the guy. But um, every time I've, I've went into a fight and I said, okay, well, I did all the training, there's nothing more I can do, and let's just see what happens. And I'm going to be present, and if he makes a mistake, I'm going to catch him, and if he beats me, he beats me. That's the way you should go into every fight. It's every time I've fought with a different kind of perspective, I've lost. Or it was a very tough fight. And every time I train like that, it's the same thing, because I was ready to train with a lot of people today and I could have gotten beat. I could have got tapped. If I would make the wrong mistake, I could. So I'm willing to put myself on the line and test myself to see what happens. Because that's what drives me. A lot of the positions that have evolved today were 50-50 guys. You know, the guys do that, you know. And uh, guys do these certain positions where you're confused. But if you dissect the position, it's very easy to stop. And then they have nothing. Then you can beat them. Um, when you are confusing, you say, oh my God, what's this going on? Oh, I'm going to, oh man, I'm going to do something. I better do something. And then you get swept, and then the guy stalls, and then you lose the points. So rubber guard and all these new guard, X guard, and all this stuff is good for competition. But I don't train for competition. I train for life. So many times I've lost in the tournament. I, mean, I haven't lost many times, but every time I've lost, or sometimes I've lost, you know, one example is Lucas Lecce. He's got a very good guard. He gets to the side here, and he does this. And he sits there and he wait, but and he swept me. But if there was a situation where jujitsu is on the street or in, a, in what jujitsu is about, defending yourself, you would never be there because I would be punching him in the face. So it's not a correct position. It's not correct. It's not right. So in jujitsu, the rules allow ten minutes. The rules allow certain stuff to happen where you can be, but. Those guys don't have the submissions in their mind, and even if they do, that's not something that is on their mind to, to do, because they would, they would be doing it more. And I'm not taking away any of the fighters, because Lucas Lecce is a great athlete, a great person, and he puts it on the line. That's what's most important. Whether he does it his way or my way, I can't say that that's wrong. I just don't do it because I don't like it, and I don't believe in it. So, I don't say that there's a bad jiu-jitsu, but I believe so much in my jiu-jitsu that I'm willing to put it and see, and if you beat me, then you beat me. But I want to see you beat me for the rest of my life because I'm going to keep training and figuring out a way to beat you. And I think my jiu-jitsu is more complex and based more on leverage 
a technique than your than everybody else's. You know? yeah, I think there's no way you can learn jujitsu through your brain. You have to touch and feel. There's no, how how did we spend an hour going over this position? In the first five minutes, you knew what I was gonna say. You knew it. It's this and this, but you have to feel. Oh, I feel strong here. Nobody can pull me here. And when they push me, nobody can push me here because I feel strong. But the only way you're going to be able to get that is by feeling it. By putting, by training and putting the math time space here. There's no way you can um, learn you You can get an idea. You can have it up here. But it's not going to translate to actually getting a belt. And for me, being under an academy and being under an instructor, which is martial arts is about, you have to be there and live with your, them every day and ask questions. And that person is your role model. That person is somebody you're going to listen to. And he's going to transfer. I don't do golden card. I just train jiu -jitsu. Sometimes I have done kettlebells and, and run and stuff, but I don't really like it. <laughs> <laughs>